Caramelle and Cappelletti pasta, very pretty in pink. Learn how to make pink pasta using beet juice. I recently made a beet salad and I saved about three quarters of a cup of the beet water. When you boil beets, the water turns beet red. We're going to begin by making the stuffing for the caramelle and the cappelletti. I'm frying up some ground beef, but you can use a mixture of ground beef, pork and veal, or you can use chicken as well. I'm frying up the meat with some onion and garlic, and then I'll season it with some oregano, basil, some salt and some pepper, and I'm just going to stir it around and make sure that it's thoroughly cooked and take it off the heat once it's fully cooked. And at this point, you can stir in your favorite grated cheese. I've got some vegan Romano cheese here, but you can certainly use a regular Romano cheese, a Parm cheese. You can even stir in ricotta cheese if you like. Now, while the meat is cooling, we're going to begin with the pasta. To make my pasta, I use a combination of regular flour and semolina flour. I've added a bit of salt to this and I'm going to gradually add the beet juice a bit at a time. If you like this recipe and want to see more, please hit the subscribe button down below for easy access to all of my recipes. And we're going to continue to add some beet juice and mix it around with our fingers. What we're looking for is for the dough to all come together. And you can see that the dough is already turning a pretty pink. And it's slowly coming together, but we're still gonna need a little bit more juice. And at this point, we can start to knead the dough. And if you find that it's too hard to knead, then you can certainly add just a little bit more water, as I'm doing here, and just incorporate it into the dough. Now, I've used uh, almost three quarters of a cup, but not quite. And I'm going to knead it for maybe about five minutes, at which point I'm going to set it aside. I'm going to wrap it in a piece of plastic wrap and let it rest for about 10 minutes. And if the texture is not quite smooth, you can knead it some more. Once the dough is rested, I'm going to cut a piece off that's roughly about an inch thick and I'm going to pass it through the pasta machine. You want to start with the notch number one, which is your thickest, and then you run it through to the very last notch, which would be your thinnest. And make sure your work surface is floured. I'm going to begin by making the caramelle, which looks like a candy wrapper. I'm going to cut rectangles like this. You don't need to make the little scalloped edges. It just looks a little bit prettier. We're going to take about a teaspoon of the meat mixture, center it in the middle, and then we're going to fold it over and press down the seam. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take each end and twist one in one direction and the other side in the opposite direction. And then pinch down those two ends as well. And here we have beautiful caramelle. Now we're going to move on to the cappelletti. I'm using a two inch cookie cutter here to cut out my circles. You want to cut the dough here and fill immediately. You don't want the dough sitting around to harden or then you can't fold it over. So you are spooning about a teaspoon of meat into the center of the circle and we fold the dough over so that it looks like a half moon. And we're going to press down and seal it all the way around. Then we're going to grab the two edges and press them together. So there you have what looks like a cardinal's hat, your little cappelletti. Isn't that pretty? And here I'm going to show you one more time. You seal the edges so it looks like a half moon. You grab your ends and seal the ends. Go to ginasbellacucina.blogspot.com for specific details of this recipe. 
and you can save your scraps and rerun them through the machine to make more cappelletti. Egg-free and dairy-free pasta, delizioso.